Mark Rogers, TV Talking College Football, even during the dead period of mid-May here as we prepare for 2017, and it's really a good time to step back, look at the positional units across the board. We talk some Stanford football, and the best way to do that is bring in Don King from Last Word on College Football. Don, how are you doing tonight? I'm fantastic, Mark. How are you? I'm doing just fine. So, great way to get it uh, started here. We'll talk quarterbacks and um, the, the schedule in – Stanford having to make the trip out to Australia and playing just about a week and a half before a lot of teams across the nation doesn't necessarily help in the process of getting the starting quarterback ready to play that game. So, of course, uh, Keller Christ uh, separated himself in the battle with Ryan Burns last year, uh, but um, was injured late in the season in the bowl game and may not be ready for the opener against Rice. That's exactly right. Um it's interesting. A lot of folks were very pessimistic that there was any shot Chris would be ready for fall camp and therefore for the beginning of season. Um, Shaw says that it's on track. And if there aren't any unexpected setbacks, that he will indeed be ready for fall camp and could get the start week one, which is actually, you know, week minus one and a half or something like that, you know, down in Australia. So uh, we'll see what happens there. I would not be shocked, though, if he's not all the way to bright. Um, Coach Shaw doesn't like to take a lot of risks with rushing people back. Uh, so don't be 100% shocked if Ryan Burns isn't in the saddle for that opener um, against Rice. Um, by all accounts, Burns seemed to have a very solid spring after flirting with the notion of transferring and then choosing not to. Um, he did graduate or is on track to graduate next month. He, he will be enrolled in graduate classes uh, in the fall as a fifth year senior and um, has a decent chance to to start week one and, and or to contribute uh, throughout the season uh, should anything happen to Chris uh, or, or should his uh, recovery take longer than anticipated. Don, so we saw both guys on that Friday night opener against Kansas State and there wasn't a whole lot of separation at that point. Burns, as you mentioned, a redshirt senior. Chris is the senior uh, coming into 2017, as this thing played out last year, what really separated Chris and gave him the edge over Burns? Yeah, Chris got, I'm not going to, lucky is probably too strong a word. I, first of all, I'll say Burns started out on fire. That first half against K-State, you know, he completed his first nine passes, first 10 passes, looked like a world beater. Um, then folks got some tape on him, you know, figured out some ways to kind of confuse him a little bit. Um, I, you know, he seemed to have a bit of a tough time, but, but there were two key things that were working against him. Uh, one, the best defense that Stanford played throughout the course of the season all happened within the first six or seven weeks of the season. And two, the offensive line did not gel early in the year. So therefore there were some, you know, he was challenged a little bit from a protection standpoint and being able to do the kinds of things that Stanford football usually does. Um, including run the ball well, which is, as you know, the best help to an effective passing game there is. Um, Nate Herbig came on, was inserted at, at starting guard, seemed to solidify the unit tremendously um, from that point on and through the rest of the season. Uh, there was a fall off in competition on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, Chris came in and got his start after that, you know, really brutally difficult offensive performance by Stanford at home and against uh, Colorado. Um, and Chris ran the table, you know, including the bowl game, which he started, but as you mentioned earlier, did not finish. So he had the benefit of uh, having the offensive line get some time to gel. He had the benefit of having less stringent competition. Um, but frankly, the offense also just looked better with him at the helm. Uh, you know, he seemed to just have, you know, have the ability to get the ball out of his hand a little bit more quickly. Um, you know, and, and and be a little more decisive in his decision making, and I really think that's what kind of was the difference. Um, but frankly, there were some things working for him that had nothing to do with him personally. Don, for a program that has produced the likes of a two-time Super Bowl winner in Jim Plunkett, another two-time Super Bowl winner and one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history in John Elway, and still on the field, of course, is Andrew Luck building his legacy, but one of the better quarterbacks in the game right now. I can't imagine that the quarterback situation in totality has ever been better than it is right now at Stanford, considering we're talking about two guys and they're not the two best 
or most talented quarterbacks on the roster. They're the guys in play for 2017. When you talk about Chris, the, the assumed starter and Burns, who may need to get that emergency start in week one. But uh, we've got Davis Mills, the number one quarterback in the country, coming into the, the fold. And K.J. Costello, a guy that may be kind of sandwiched in regards to two different uh, quarterback uh, situations because uh, uh, he's uh, highly regarded as well. Yeah, absolutely. I hear Mills is hurt, was hurt late in his high school um, career, senior year. Um, and honestly, there was probably fairly little chance he was going to he was going to play uh, as a true freshman anyway. It's just tough with that. The playbook that uh, Sean Bloomgren used uh, for for a true freshman to absorb it all. Um, so he'll get some strength work, get himself all the way healthy, get some mental reps. Um, but expect him to be, you know, really, really good down the road. He seems to have all the tools. Um, Costello, I think, you know, got got his first serious action this spring, you know, with Chris out. He got to basically split reps with Burns. I heard he did some good things in camp, uh, was not terribly accurate or impressive in the spring game. Um, but that that can happen. It just takes some time to work all that those things through and to get your rhythm, particularly with whatever unit you're working with, particularly the offensive line unit. Um, and uh, it, it's too soon to say that that Costello can't uh, couldn't yet be an, a highly effective starter. He might be. Uh, we'll see. Um, but the point you make is dead right. You know, we've got two guys who've proven that they can win Division One football games last fall. Um, you know, one or both of them will factor in significantly this season. Both appear to have been to have improved steadily through last year or, you know, in the jump during the offseason. I think, uh, you know, the starting position is going to be relatively solid, even if it winds up being burned some uh, because of the injury to Chris. Um, but the guys waiting in the wings look like nothing but fantastic. It does look like a terrific situation. Don, is this as cut and dry as Burns gets the week one start, maybe even the week two start, even though there's some time uh, to prepare for game number two because of the trip and the bye week, and then it's Chris' job, and that's a done deal, and that's all there is? Or is there a little suspense in this situation? Can Costello play himself into the mix? And even despite the injury, because of his sheer talent, Davis Mills, does he play himself into the mix? Is this possible in any way, shape, or form that you can imagine come August? Here, here's everything I've been able to glean. Um, I don't expect Mills to play this year, period. Um, and that's fairly standard for the course. I'll remind you, Andrew Luck didn't play at all his true freshman year. So, no, I don't, I don't think that's really realistic. Um, Costello could, you know, come back in the fall and light it up and really ease his way into the situation, uh, the conversation and, force himself to get some reps. You know, I, I'll remind you again, during his redshirt freshman season, Kevin Hogan did exactly that. He did get a series, you know, pretty much every game uh, until the Colorado game when, you know, he, he got more series. He got, he got, you know, he came into the second series and played the next five and scored touchdowns on all of them and never left the starting lineup ever again. So that's something that possibly could happen. Um, what Shaw has said on this subject, though, is that Keller Christ has earned the starting job, and if healthy, Christ is the guy. So if he's healthy in week one, he'll be the week one starter uh, and going forward. If he's healthy in you know week two as conference play starts, he'll be the starter in that game and going forward. You can expect Christ to be the starter, and that's pretty much out of the words, out of the mouth of uh, the head coach. All right. If nothing else, it should be a stable quarterback situation for 2017 and possibly a spectacular quarterback in place, whether that's Costello or Mills in 2018. Donald King from Last Word on College Football, helping us sort out this quarterback situation at the university or at uh, Stanford University. Don, we appreciate the time. Thank you, Mark.